Monday at just 5 11 on my clock which is usually about 10 minutes fast in the car but that's okay just got just coming home from Ray Wiegand's where I picked up compost for the next installation that I've got going on this week I'm pretty geeked about it it's gonna be really nice um, the client had pulled out a lot of their foundation plantings along their house and then in the very front of their yard as well and that was a couple years ago and then they had a lot of different other projects going on and just hadn't hadn't um, you know replanted or even thought too much about what they wanted to replant there and they just kind of decided it was time so it's so fun and they want native plants and things that change color and flowering shrubs and so that's like right up my alley so I'm, I'm pretty geeked about it and then they also want um, some spring bulbs planted so uh, once I get the big shrubs planted and then get some of the smaller ones in and I already have it all mapped out in my little graph thing that I use that I do my graph paper so once I get all of those in then I can decide where the best places are for the spring bulbs to give them some color and I just think it's gonna look beautiful I'm excited about it and um, it'll be fun um, it's the the challenge was that it's in the north side of the house so um, you have to be careful of the shade in the north side and it's also part of the garden's beds are like underneath eaves if you have eaves over your house and you never want to plant under eaves because nothing will grow there and if you think I'm fooling <laughs> then go to your house and look under your eaves and stick your finger in the dirt in a couple places and I'll bet you a dollar at a donut that um, the, the, the soil is like super, 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 super dry. It's like a desert there. So when you're going to put your own beds in, you're going to do things around your house, look up for those eaves. And eaves are the, like the overhang. So like, like if this is the, the, the roof of the house and then it's got like a little thing sticking out a little bit like out from the, like out from the side of the house I don't know how to explain it but like out from the side of the house it's like an overhang that's what I, I call it is e I call eaves an overhang um anyway if you have those and it's a garden bed that's where you don't want to plant that is where you're gonna put down you could put down yes you can put down landscape fabric you can put down landscape fabric and lava rocks there or landscape fabric and gravel or landscape fabric and wood chips or mulch or whatever because you're not going to want like weeds that love poor conditions to grow there because it may be difficult to get to you can also put um path stones you can actually put like patio blocks there so that you can get to the back of the bed alongside the house for maintenance maybe you need to cut things or weed in the bed maybe you want to interplant things in between the plants back there maybe you want to harvest some of the things that are back there um, so so yeah one you never plant right up against the house that's always a bad idea you're gonna come out at least like usually about two feet away from a house and that's usually because um, of the eaves so water doesn't get there and people say well I'll just make sure I get I water and it no 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 let's keep it as simple as possible don't try to remember to water that that's a silly thing that's not a lazy gardening thing that's a um, that's a set yourself up for failure thing and I don't want you to do that that's a bad idea so one, so that's one of the reasons you don't plant un, like up against the house. The other thing with houses is that um, if it's a brick house, it will heat up a lot of times from the sun and it can scorch your plants. Also, if you plant up against any kind of building, your house, a shed, a garage, um, you most people when they do that, they don't take into consideration how much room the plant needs to expand either so they might plant right against the side of something when the plant's small and they would look at it and say oh isn't that so pretty against the garage or isn't that so pretty against the shed but what they don't 
remember is a plant is going to want to grow and spread and spread its roots out and it's not going to have the room to do that and so it might look nice that very first year when it's when it's um, sleeping and it might look nice that second year when it's creeping because you might say well I don't have eaves so what's the big deal but once it leaps especially if it's a perennial um, and even some annuals some annuals have some extraordinary growth um, in the growing season when it's warm but once they they start to grow like crazy like they want to do uh, they just don't have room and then if you don't know that you can divide it up and then make make more plantings from one big plant if you don't understand that or you don't know how then you're gonna feel like oh what did I do why am I not growing well and you're gonna say I have a black thumb when actually you don't you don't maybe you just didn't have a good start and most people who say they have a black thumb it's because they didn't have a good start um, I've posted before you didn't build your house but you live in it right you didn't build your car and assemble your car but you use it right you didn't make your shoes I didn't make my hoodie but I wear them somebody else did that hard part so that I can just slip my hoodie over my head so I can slip my shoes on or my chicken boots um, so I can enter my car turn the key and away I go to go get compost so I don't know why people are on on this they're like misguided as far as their gardens go you do not have to establish the garden okay you can let somebody build it for you and then you can enjoy it I mean that sounds like a winning plan to me um, and so you know and, and and especially, I feel really, you know, my heart aches for um, gardeners or, or people who have never gardened before and they want to garden, but they want to do it the right way. So they're looking at all the websites and they're reading all the articles and they're watching all the YouTube videos and they're going to all these lectures or they're buying all these books and reading them. And, um, and they, they're just, they really want to do it the right way. And then they like, don't start. They get stuck in the head knowledge and then they don't move forward and actually just do something. So, I have the head knowledge, I have the practical knowledge. You tell me what you want within reason, within Michigan limits, and I will see what I can do for you. And I'll draft stuff up, I'll give you photos. And when I do, like when I, when you see me do the, um, you see, I see posts, and it's like you see, and it's like a bare field, but I see, and then there's flowers and plants and shrubs and things like that. Those, those that I provide for my clients, those are the mature versions of those plants. So by the third year, they will have grown to those, that maturity level for sure. So when I plant them, I am planting them at like elementary school, sometimes middle school level plantings so that they can get established in the soil and become really big on their own. If I start with adult plants, like I, I've seen like large like landscape companies do this where they you know they come in with the giant arborvitae or they come in with the giant fountain grass and they dig a big old hole with like an excavator, you know, there's like six or seven guys, well, a couple guys like digging holes and stuff. Um, it looks beautiful when it's done, but it takes a lot of work, a lot of like lifting work and a lot of digging work and a lot of money because those kinds of plants are very expensive. The other part is if something goes wrong with the planting, then, and if the shrub dies or the grass dies, whatever it might be, um, then you're out that money. So not only did you pay the people to do this big work to look fantastic maybe for your barbecue or your wedding reception or graduation party, but now, sorry, I'm backward, going backward, there you go. Um, but then you have to, there we go, there we go. 
Then you also have to um, get a new shrub. And that's so fun. Um, and, I, and I am not in any way saying that landscape companies don't do it right. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying you have a lot of upfront costs and a lot of upfront risks when you take a mature specimen and you put it in your yard versus the smaller specimens that will grow up to size. So I try to keep, um, I try to keep my designs and recommendations affordable for people. Um, so it doesn't break the bank and I mean, maybe, maybe a deer comes and grabs hold of your plant, your little plant that we just put in last week and he pulls it up, takes off with it. Um, you know, that plant, maybe it, maybe that plant costs $8. We can get another one for $8. I mean, $8 is like less than fast food meals anymore. So that's kind of where I stand on that. Um, there's something else about, and, and an analogy is like, you know, an adult having to pick up and move themselves, transplant themselves from one area of the country to another versus a child, you know, cause generally we say children are malleable and flexible, um, compared to adults. So, so it's exciting. So I have some shrubs that are, um, in, I think they're like three Three gallon and five gallon pots they're nice looking they're nice looking specimens and they need to get in the ground like soon so I think I get to do that tomorrow um, and then I have a lot of smaller ones that are like four inch pots that are perennials but they do spread I know them and that's the other part so if you if you know a doctor okay you're good friends with the doctor and you say Hey, Doc, you know, I got this, this thing on my nose. And they're, and the doc's like, eh, let me take a quick look. They take a quick look and they're like, yeah, that looks like a freckle. And it's not an odd shape. It's not an odd color. It's not ulcerating. It's a freckle. Try some lemon juice. You know, a physician that you know is different than, um, where was I going with that? I was going with that to say that I know these different plants. I know the characteristics of these different plants that I put into your gardens. Uh, I generally know, <laughs> except for this year. This year it was a test garden, and it was a uh, it was one that um, I, I basically gave away because the um, the client is is in the eighties. She's in her eighties, and I was like, she's gonna have some flowers. So I tried Tithonia in her garden. I learned very quickly, and I tried it in my own garden this year too. I learned very quickly how large they get and how wide they spread. But like I said, it was for my garden and it was for this client's garden. Um, but generally, all the plants I put in your, in your gardens, I know about. So I know what their characteristics are. I know if they like the, the heat, the cold. I don't know if they like the sun, the shade. Um, I've got some plants going in there. It's going to be cool because since it's the north side of the house and it won't get full sun, full sun until um, probably midsummer. Um, and it's very similar to what we've got in our house in our backyard as far as our porch goes, as far as the light and the shade go, the sunshine and the shade go. So... Uh, there is a great spot, um, because it's like, there's a cement porch and then it comes down about two feet from the, from the cement porch. And so right in front of the cement porch is a great spot for ferns that are native ferns to Michigan. And they're going to look so cool and they're called Christmas ferns. So they're going to stay green year round. Um, and they, ferns are one of those things, the ones that are perennial ferns, not the potted ones. Like the Boston ferns that people get in the summer, not like that, but the kind that are actually in the ground year round. They are um, they're workhorses, and they usually can take a whole lot of abuse and not a lot of sun, and they just keep coming back. They're they're almost like a weed as far as their like toughness goes, which is good because 
The client also gets a lot of snow on their porch in the winter time, and they like to just shovel it right off the edge of the porch. So that was my conundrum. I'm like, I need something that, that is okay with the shade and is gonna be tough enough to be able to take some snow. So I'm not planting them right up against the porch. Remember I said, don't plant right up against things. Pull back some. So I'm gonna pull back about a foot for these plants. So they're gonna have room to spread, and then the snow is gonna have room to come down on them and uh it should be kind of cool um what else and there's going to be some of them interplanted um inside of some of the the really tall perennials that will give shade so they're going to be able to fill in spots which is good for keeping weeds down and it's good for encouraging um encouraging wildlife like toads frogs, um, dragonflies, you name it, to come into the garden. Um, one thing that I, I, I like to, I think it's kind of, um, it's amusing to see. I, I like to see people's, I like to see people's enthusiasm. I love to see their joy. And I did it too uh, when I was planting too. Is, is like, you've got a bed, you know, it's maybe this big. And like every three feet is like one plant. Because they're it's a perennial bed, don't you know? It's a butterfly bed, don't you know? So there's there's plants in there, and they're spaced out a lot. And then in between each of them is all mulch. And um, I love the enthusiasm. What I would love to see even more to be beneficial for their plants are annuals planted in between them. And fill in those spaces. Because the tighter packed your bed is, the less weeding you're going to have to do, the more space there is for uh, wildlife to hide. There's more um, rain capture because now you've got all kinds of leaves close together, depending on the plant. There's some plants that don't like it like that. They like a lot of air. But you, the more leaves and plants you have in that area, uh, the more rain will capture. They also will shade each other's roots really well. So they may not need to be watered additionally they may be able to just take whatever the rain gives them um so but it's so fun i get i'm so excited i'm going to start this garden um this week put in as much as what i what i was able to secure which i was really glad because i i it was more than just the shrubs and the grasses that have changed color um it's also going to be the smaller perennials and then some mid-sized perennials i was able to get some some of the mid-size oh tellies tellies and troy still had some perennials they still have some perennials they even have some on sale there's like a clearance rack a clearance table of perennials if you want to get some of those so that is tomorrow and i did sometimes i forget to bring us to bring a shovel or to check the soil um but this time i did check the soil Sorry, looking at a hawk across the field or across the way there. Um, I, I did check the soil because they had a shovel right there. And when I put my sho the shovel in the soil and lifted it up, the soil was really light and, and just, it just seemed just right. What I did notice is afterward, well, one, it looked like there had been a lot of water like on top of it because it looked like there was some like... Uh, like algae growing a little bit like maybe standing water was there but the other part I, 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 re I realized when I got home was that there was nothing growing there like there was nothing growing there and and it, I didn't put it all together until um, I mentioned to the client that um, there could be uh, you can use cardboard to, you know, what different things you could use to smother the weeds while the plants are growing and cardboard was one of them. And the client turned to the, uh, their partner and said, Hey, look, cardboard, you can put cardboard down to smother the weeds. And their partner said, Oh no, no, I'll just use Roundup. That's not a big deal. Okay. Don't. Try very, very hard not to use Roundup. The only time I use Roundup is going to be for poison ivy. Because that's a special case. And you don't want it to keep coming back because you don't want to have to keep dealing with it. Um, but 
round up in your garden bed is not great and that's that's a concern I'm gonna have um, is that I don't know exactly when the last time it was sprayed I have read that it can stay in the soil for 140 days um, I am bringing the compost in I thought I read something else that says hey you can you could still plant in there even if Roundup was used um, but I don't know for sure so whenever I'm not sure I like to give it a boost of compost because it's like giving plants and shrubs uh, like vitamins it's like the first line of defense or the first line of like boosting their systems is compost so I'm gonna put the compost down as mulch and I wasn't sure if I was going to mix the soil with the compost too. And I, I, I'm going to play it by ear when I get there and see. Um, I think the plan is going to be is to make the holes just a little bigger than what I would normally need. And then once I put the plants in, like surround it with the compost so that the new plants are not on the, at least at the surface, at least at the surface area. Well, I'm not sure. I think so surface area maybe the top couple inches I'll put compost in there in the hole with it and then like I said I'm going to mulch with compost probably about two inches I think for every plant that I, that I actually put in this week and then there were a couple other plants I, I could not locate yet because it's I mean when I went to Ray Wiggins to get the compost and it's all Christmas. It's like Christmas exploded all over the store, which is beautiful. I mean, I'm not, I'm not knocking that at all. I love to see all the Christmas displays. It just made it harder to find um, some of the things that I wanted to get. And I also, I have some uh, mics also. I have to remember to bring that. And mics is that stuff you see in the square blue boxes, plastic boxes. And I think it's spelled M-Y-K-E-S. And it's a uh, mycorrhizome powder. And, and when you plant trees and shrubs, you dig your hole and then you sprinkle the mics down at the bottom of the hole. And then you put the plant in. So you're sprinkling the mics where the root zone is, where the plant's roots are. And what I've been told is that it is like, um, that mics is like a knife and fork for roots. That the roots are a, more able to take in the nutrients from the soil and to get established quicker and to get more new roots growing into the soil quicker um, when you put the mics in the hole first. So, and I also need to make a list of what I'm actually gonna bring, exactly what I'm gonna bring. And then I need to look at my list before I leave to make sure I have everything I wanna bring. And I mean, I do have a list that I normally use um, but the last couple jobs, I forgot my list, so I had to kind of wing it. And then, uh, I had to stop at a store on the way over to get some stuff. So, that's what's going on today. Um, that's daylight savings time is, I know, I don't need to complain about it because y'all are probably complaining about it, but like, it's, what, five o'clock? I think it's sunset. And I was getting ready to go over to um wherever I went to where to go Ray Wiggins oh there's my phone duh uh I was going getting ready to go over to Ray Wiggins and I was like it seems to be getting dark I'm like it's almost like sunset I better let the chickens out because they like to run around for like an hour before sunset and I'm glad I did it before I left because they wouldn't have any time out there if I had waited it's getting kind of dark now and oh and I made a video today it's up on YouTube my YouTube channel which if you like gardening videos and you like the kind of, kind of content that I present then you may want to subscribe to my YouTube channel like share comment that kind of thing um, anyway I made a video about basic watering basic watering for outdoor plants especially the new plants and 
um, it's more for, it's more for like beginning gardeners who are kind of doing it themselves or they, they just haven't, um, had gardens that were established yet. And it's kind of like a supplement. It, I, I realized that I had not, what I tell people when I first plant is I say water once a week for a week and then water like, no, not once, wait, once a week, once a day, once every day for a week and then maybe two times a week and then maybe one time a week and it depends on the soil. So if it's clay soil, you're going to water less because clay holds the water in like a clay bowl would. So the more you water, the more water kind of just kind of sits there and it takes a long time to actually go into the ground. Um, so you would water less often in clay soil and more often if your soil is sandy or really loose. <sighs> but when I was watering, it was when I was watering my strawberry plants, the strawberry plants were just, they were like transplanted from a different job the one where we got the stepping stones from, um, there was no way I was going to throw them away. So I gave a bunch away and I planted a bunch as well. And I mean, they were just, they were like, what, like two or three inches tall, maybe. And then they had just little bitty roots, just tiny little roots. So as I was going around to the different strawberry plants I planted, they're just little, little guys. So really, literally, I was like, one, two, one, two one two one two to each one of them i was going around and i didn't have to give them much water because they're still little the roots aren't very deep and it, they were little <coughs> excuse me but then i had um did i put in lavender yeah i put in lavender and i put in some sage and then those are like four by four containers so four inch containers and they're usually about four inches tall or four inches deep. So the roots are down about four inches and the surface area when you plant them is about this big. So when I went to water those and because I've done this for so long, it's like second nature. And I didn't think to translate that to what a new person should be doing for their watering. So for them, maybe I'm like, one, and this is with my water can and if I tip it all the way over this is kind of I'd be like one two three four five and then like kind of go to the next one about the same amount of time and I kind of kind of count out to myself and as I'm counting I'm thinking about my brain is thinking about how long it takes that water to go from the surface of the plant all the way down, all the way down, trickle, 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 slowly, 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 down to the roots. The other part is that I would, because they're already in the ground, I'm also going to water around the edges of the plant. So if this is a plant space of soil, the potting soil it came with, I'm also going to water the edges of the plant. And if, um, like if we're in a more of like a droughty kind of situation, I may not even water this this surface air this surface part like where the potting soil is. I might only water around the roots, around the like the circumference of where I planted it because what I want the roots to do is not stay in this little pot. I want the roots to spread out into the neighboring soil searching for water. Searching for water. So that's one of the that's one of the reasons you don't want to water like the stuff that's been in the ground for a while. You don't want to water the that like all the time. Because if it's really easy for them to find water, the roots are going to stay toward the surface. It's not going to be a big deal. They're not going to go looking for water. They're not going to go searching for and putting deeper roots down and spreading roots out looking for water if they know you're always going to be giving them a drink like every day every day every other day um they have to kind of go off and search on their own for some water and it makes for stronger plants as well so so compost new job this week well plant i get to do an install this week i'm so excited it's gonna be so fun 
and what else? Oh, and the watering video is out. And I had made a video about leaf blowing. And what I do is I like to blow all the leaves into the garden beds and all at the bases of the trees because that's what they, that's what happens in nature. The leaves fall. If you look at a forest, you're walking through the forest and you see the leaves on the forest floor and then they just decompose. And there's and if you pick up one of these decomposed leaves, it's leaves, it's cool because there's like holes all in it where it's just getting eaten away by little, I don't know what, things that eat leaves. And uh, so in nature, the leaves fall to the ground, they decompose, and they enrich the soil. They basically make their own compost. And in an established forest, that, that leaf litter compost can be six to 10 inches deep over time. So if you were to take a shovel in an established forest and start digging, you're just gonna find compost and compost and compost and compost. It's very, very, very rich soil because the leaves just fall and nothing goes with them. So that's what I try to do in the fall is um, blow all the leaves into the beds and stuff. So I was gonna make a video for you. Well, I'll probably just, I have the video almost ready. I just haven't posted it because we had these wind storms a couple days ago and um, I came home and, oh, I came home. I had, there was a conference I went to on Saturday and I came home and it looked like my husband had blown all the leaves because after I blew the leaves, that of course more leaves fall and the, my over by my back door, the concrete was covered in red Japanese, you know, the Japanese maple leaves, which was really pretty, but it was kind of annoying because I already just, just blew them. So when I came home, I was like, oh, look at that. He blew him again. No, 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 no. It was a windstorm because now all of those leaves that were over there that were loose on the concrete are like all up in there that way. They all went west. Um, so that can happen. That's okay. Again, it's, it's nature. So <sighs> that's about that. And I think I saw the temperature is going to be like 33 today, tonight. So I have my hoop house closed. I have the um, incandescent Christmas lights growing around the pepper leaves, pepper plant leaves, to try to keep the leaves themselves from freezing. And I heavily mulched the bases of the pepper plants with straw to keep some insulation against the cold. And then I've got cardboard on the sides of the hoop house and cardboard on the front of the hoop house to try to keep the wind from blowing in and getting things. And then, um, what else? I did close up the greenhouse before I, before I went out as it was, it was getting nippy and the heater is on, it's set, it's got a, a therm, thermostat and it's set to turn on if the temperature goes below 50. So it basically it's set to keep the temperature in the greenhouse at about 50 degrees, which is definitely not freezing. Now, um, if the power goes out, I can, I can take hoops and I could put like comforters over them at night or until the power comes back on and I can preserve what's growing back, um, in the greenhouse itself. My kitchen beds, yep, I'm going to have to cover those. Those are over here to my right. My right, your left, maybe. And, oh yeah, and the metal the metal trough bed. I'm going to cover that back up, up with, or close it up for the frost cloth too. Um, but you know what? It still does really well in these this kind of weather, those pansies, pansies, violas, um, jumping, what are they called? Jump, jumping jacks, jumper. Jump. Johnny Jump Ups. Johnny Jump Ups, they call them. Um, anything in the Vi Viola family like that, they, they don't mind this cold weather at all. They prefer it more rainy um, and cold. Go figure. Uh, but they're doing well. And in fact, in that metal trough, if I don't come out and open it up in time, and the sun is like beating on the frost cloth for the metal trough, the air inside gets really warm and the pansies get mad. They start getting wilty. So I always got to remember to open it up when it's sunny, make sure I close them down at night 
And I close it down at night, not for the pansies. I close it down for the, um, there's still a pepper plants in there. There's still rosemary and sage and oregano. Oregano just keeps coming back. There's chives. Chives like the cold too. They don't, they don't mind it at all. Um, but I just want to, I'm kind of doing experiments. I like to see how long I can keep things going. And it is, I'm looking at the weather forecast and it, it, it doesn't look like it's going to rain for another, for at least a week. Now to me, I've always remembered like October as cold, cloudy, and rainy and windy, cold, cloudy, rainy, windy. And we didn't, we got some rain, but it wasn't anything like, like I'm used to. And now we're kind of going into more of a droughty fall as well. So I'm going to have to make sure that I water um, some of these newer things that I put in. The strawberries seem to love it. Cold too. Cold and rainy. They love it. I mean, I'm getting lots of new leaves in the stuff I put in the ground. And in the stuff I put in containers, long containers, are getting new leaves too. So they're doing fine. And now it's about dark. I'm going to have to go in. And it's cold. <gasps> but, but, the good thing that about sunset is I can go lock the chickens up right now. Because they're probably inside. <laughs> so, um, or in their, you know, in their coop, in their pen. Which is good. And watering the best and I and I put this in the video that I made today and put out on YouTube it's on YouTube my YouTube channel um watering the best is going to be rainwater the best 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 is always rainwater always 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 rainwater I mean even though like I, I remember growing up and they were talking about acid rain acid rain is coming from the sky I was like oh my gosh I don't want to go out there you know you're gonna get your skin ripped away or something like that but no the best water is rainwater. If you can collect it from your house, from your gutters, that's great. If you can't collect it from your gutters into like a rain barrel, then get some buckets out when it rains. Um, put bowls out and, to catch the rain and then put them in and do a big five gallon bucket or something. But it's the best thing for your plants. That's the most natural thing for your plants. If you ever saw the movie Idiocracy... <laughs> For those of you who have seen the movie Idiocracy, I'm just going to give you some time to laugh. And those who have not seen it, I'm just going to tell you that um, the basic premise is that a guy time travels because he gets like, um, he was part of like a medical experiment that gets shelved and he goes into storage. So when he comes out of storage, it turns out he's the smartest man in the world, even though he was of medium intellect. But, I was going to say, that's not really relevant. But it is relevant because <laughs> when he comes out, everyone in the world is like, they all brand themselves. But they also love sports drinks. I can't remember what the sport drink is. But they were trying to give it to plants too. And they were like, for the sports drink, it was always like, it's got electrolytes. It's what your body craves. And so they were trying to, to water the plants with the sports drink. And he and they obviously the plants were not happy. They were not growing for them. They were dying. So he had to say, Why, what are you doing? You need water for plants. Plants need water. And they were like, no, that's not right. Because again, he's, he's the smartest guy in the world now. And... Um, so when he actually has them use water on the plants and basically he saves the food chain and everyone gets to live and then they want to make him king or president or something like that. Anyway, so like new moms, the, the commercials are, all, are always like for formula. They're always like breast is best, but Similac or breast is best, but, um, you know, infamil. Um, so what's best for your plants is rain water. Rain water, rain water, rain water. And then some people say, well, what about pond water? Well, it depends on the pond. It depends on what the pond is catching when it rains. If you are near farmer fields and you have a retention pond that the fields have drained off into, 
you may have fertilizer you may have um, herbicides in there um, and other things that maybe you're not going to want in your water for your plants it may harm your plants if you live near um, cattle fields you may have horse dung or horse diseases or cow diseases or or even if you're near chickens if it's by your chickens you're gonna have waste there I mean you have to think about everything for water water always goes downhill water always wins but water always goes downhill so think about everything else that comes downhill with it like I'm near a main road and if I were to make a pond near the road I know that in the winter time the salt is gonna come down in there I know that um, somebody's leaky gas tank spills are going to come down here or oil is going to come down here or antifreeze or brake fluid or whatever it is is going to drain into the water if I decided to make a pond right next to the road or near the road. So you have to think about that and so I, that's why I'm not a big fan of um, ponds as the water source. You can use it, it's water. Um, but if you're having problems growing your plants and you're using pond water, you might rethink it a little bit. The other thing is, people say, what about streams and rivers? Again, do you know exactly what's coming from, from upstream to down? And again, if this is the only water source you have and your plants are doing well, keep doing what you're doing. But if you're not having success or if the leaves are keep you know turning yellow, if the plants are not reaching their full maturity, like you put in a plant, a perennial, in decent soil, you know, five years ago, and it's still kind of small, and it hasn't just said, oh, I'm growing, something's wrong somewhere. So you have to kind of, you have to kind of do some investigating and see. So first is rainwater. First is rainwater. Even if it comes off your roof, and maybe there's little, little gravel thingies from the, the those things that cover roofs shingles even if that's in the water that doesn't matter because those are usually going to fall down to the bottom and you're not drinking the water the plants are drinking the water um some people use some people will catch their not the black water black water like in rv terms that's where the the feces is you don't want that but some people will use their gray water on shrubs and trees they're not going to eat from or they're not going to harvest things from or they're not going to take leaves and, and use those in recipes from or something like that they may use those they may have a run run a line actually for their gray water to go right to their shrubs and trees and like some kind of like um irrigation system and go for it um so gray water is like your your hand washing from your sinks, your dishwashing, showers, um, but it's not feces, like not necessarily, no, not like black water, um, but it's still, rainwater's best. Second best is going to be your city water, city water, and yes, city water is chlorinated, so what you do is you fill up your containers uh, with your city water, you leave them overnight so the chlorine will has time to dissipate. You leave them outside or near outside so they're about the same temperature as your plants and they're about the same temperature as their soil so you don't shock them. So city water in containers is your next best, next best water. Um, well water is good if it's not the softened well water from your house, from inside the house. Your hard water can be used from your well. That's the kind that has like the orange tint to it. And it leaves like orange stains on things. You could use hard water, but you have to think about the um, additional iron that's going to be in your soil. And what you might have to do to um, amend that and like compensate for that. But you don't want the soft water because there's salts in there. And eventually the salt will build up around your plants. Um, which is going to be bad for them. And... I think I'm forgetting something. Um, oh, hose water. Well, Tam, why can't I just not use a hose? Listen, you do what you want to do. But if I was going to do it, 
if I have plants I treasure and I'm just like, especially if I'm just starting them out, I don't, I don't necessarily want to use the hose. I would use the hose to fill my buckets to keep them overnight so the chlorine will dissipate so that I can use them for the next day. But hose water can be super cold. It also could be super hot and you don't know, you don't realize that necessarily. So when, and it's also, you know, even if you use like a, like a slower mister kind of thing on your hose water, I mean, it might be too much for the plant to handle. It might be too much force for that plant or I don't know. I don't know. I've used hoses before and I have accidentally cooked my plants, like boiled them because the water was too hot. And I've accidentally shocked them because it was a really, 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 really hot day. And the hose water came out cold first thing in the morning and shocked them. That's not fun. So those are some considerations. And it's dark. I got to go in. All right. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, happy Monday. And Friday is Veterans Day. So some of you may have that day off. And for Veterans Day, I salute all of you. Uh, we are having military night is the theme for Awanas this week. So Wednesday night. So I have to try to get some military equipment from my husband for that. And I just want to let you know I love y'all. And I still can't do Facebook Lives. <laughs> but that's okay. I'll, I'll still record and I'll still upload. Mm -mm -mm. Can't stop me. Um, but anyway, I love you guys. Learn and grow and learn and grow some more. And bye.